Welcome to Up to the Minute. It's a Tuesday. Good to have you with us. I'm Todd Duplantis. We've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour. Uh, of course, we are always live on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. every weekday morning when HCC is in session. And you can catch the rebroadcast of our show at noon and five on HCC TV. My co-host, Dr. Tony Rayo Sutherland, is with me this morning. Good to see you, Tony. Well, your mic's off. That's all right. Sorry, it's a Monday. It's, it's a Monday. For, it's a Monday it's a for Monday you. That's for all right. Me. I yesterday I was doing Christmas decorations in my house, so oh, my muscles are all tired from all that. <laughs> Well, we are back, and it's uh, it's Tuesday for the rest of us, Monday for Tony. But uh, they can. Uh, we were talking about being back on HCC TV, but we're also all across social media. We encourage everybody to find us in social media. Yes, just look for Houston Community College District, not just HCC, but Houston Community College District, and you'll find us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. That is right. Okay, Tony, uh, we're going to check in with you in a little while because you'll be interviewing our next guest. Uh, we're going to introduce Dr. Mehmet Argin, who is the Dean of the Global Energy Center of Excellence. Good to see you again, Mehmet. Yeah, good morning, Todd and Tony. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, so you're going to, a lot of great things going on out the uh, Global Energy COE, and we're going to hear all about that in just a few moments. So stand by, we'll check in with you uh, right. very shortly. It's Tasty Tuesday here on Up to the Minute. We always bring in local restaurants, and today's no exception. We've got Bob Orzo joining us. He's the owner and proprietor of Bob's, or Bagel Bob's, I should say, out on the west side of town. Good to see you, Bob. How are you? Okay, I'm all right. We're making some bagels over here. Making We're making some bagels. Home with some plain bagels and everything bagels. And these are extremely authentic because... You're from New York. We can tell by your accent. So uh, you Long know what Queens. you doing when it comes to you're from the East. Huh? Tell us about your journey to Houston. What brought you here? Well, basically, it became a bad business environment in New York like 15, 18 years ago. And a lot of businesses dried up and went out during uh, the, the raid on small business, let's say. Over right. 40,000 businesses went out in a 12-year period. And I was just one of them. And I came to Houston because I had connections here. And I decided to try to get my bagel thing going over here in Texas. And you've also, if I'm reading here, you uh, worked for a couple of other places uh, for several years with B&B Butchers. Is that correct? Yes. What happened was I was only open for six months. When I came in 2015, I had four floods in six months and I went out of business and Ben Berg had become a customer of mine. And when I was going out, he was getting open and he offered me a job as a bread baker. And the rest was history. For five years, I've been baking bread for Ben. And, you know, he has various uh, situations now besides being butchers. And uh, it was a wonderful experience working for him and his organization. But then this store came along and I had the chance to grab the store and uh, converted a bagel shop, donut shop, into uh, my current bagel store, which is going to be, it's a small bagel store here. Right. It's kind of a bagel deli. You know. And you guys are on the, tell folks where exactly you're located, where they can find you. Directly across the street from Tully Stadium, which okay. is the Spring Branch Independent School District uh, Sports Complex. Okay. It's on the uh, 1011A Dairy Ashford, right off okay. I-10. All right. And we'll put uh, we'll put some information in our social media post after the show. Thanks. You got some bagels. You got some bagels going on now. Tell yes. us what you're going to be doing for us. Okay. Let me take a look at the oven and then we're going to take a look at the rolling situation. We have my crew, my very nice crew here. Pedro is here and Shelly making the breakfast sandwiches. Uh, breakfast sandwiches, very big thing here. People love them. You know, what has been okay. the reaction in Houston? I, mean, I know uh, uh, I'm a bagel lover and it seems to be a lot of them in Houston, but being in Texas, you know, people here know what kolaches are, breakfast sandwiches. What's been the reaction to true New York style bagels? It's, the reaction's been very good. Um, People just like it because I guess the particular breakfast sandwich that we do, for some reason, wasn't happening here. Right. I mean, there's, there's other bagel stores very successful here, but I guess that's part of the New York bagel world. We're not all the same. You go from town to town, neighborhood to neighborhood. Everybody's got their own little twist on it. 
Right. So let me. I'm going to turn some bagels in the oven right now. Okay. And then uh, we're going to roll a few bagels so you can see how that works. So right now they're on the boards. This is the original authentic style. They're on boards with canvas. With they first go in the water, they get boiled, then they go on the board, and they bake for five minutes. And then when they're baked on one side and dried out like that, we turn them over. Notice there's no gloves and there's no gloves necessary because with this is everything on the bottom and uh, plain on top. Okay. There's no gloves because it's a 500 degree oven and it's boiling water. Yeah. And once they're finished baking, they come out of the oven. They're never handled again. Some people are concerned when they see no gloves in the making of the bagels, but basically you can't handle boiled water in a 500 degree oven with those gloves on. Right. So now we have over here the dough. This is the plain dough. I'm going to roll out a few bagels so you can see how it works. I made a small batch for the occasion. So the plain dough is going to give us the plain bagels, obviously, and the everything. Plain and everything consumes more than half of everything we do. Wow. And then there's the flavor. There's cinnamon raisin. We do marble rye. We do egg, blueberry, uh, whole wheat. Uh, it, when you get into the seeds, that's all on the plain bagels. The plain bagels is the base for the plain the everything, the onion, right. the garlic, the garlic salt, all of that. You make it, rolling those bagels look pretty easy. How long would it take uh, someone to I'm actually to going pretty slow because I'm trying, I'm trying to stay focused here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good question. Uh, we roll out, I roll out in an hour about 12 dozen bagels. Wow. In, in one hour out of a dough that is uh, uh, 22 pounds in weight. It's very wow. basic dough. What I do that's a little different than everybody else, we don't use dough conditioners. This is a preservative that keeps the bagel soft all day. Right. I got away from that as soon as I learned how to make bagels in New York. It's basic. I use spring water. You got to have really good water for a good pizza or bagel or anything with bread. Right. So it's, it's the water and the flour, high gluten flour. This is not a low gluten operation. Uh, and salt and yeast and malt, malt syrup. Malt syrup usually comes from barley. But there's a problem with barley malt syrup right now. So we're using corn malt syrup, which works. Okay. It's, it's, it's just about the same. Tell me about those not breakfast. Too much. Yeah, no, it's, I want to know about those breakfast sandwiches. You said yours are unique. unique. Tell us a bit about those. Okay, the breakfast sandwich. Dave, if you could, could we, did they just finish that sandwich? He wants to know about the breakfast sandwiches. Can we catch one in action there? Okay, yeah, let's catch him right now. Pedro's putting together... Uh, bacon, egg, and cheese. No, it's a sausage, egg, and cheese. So the thing about our breakfast sandwiches that a lot of people like is that we offer uh, eight different meats and cheeses. You could get pastrami or roast beef or turkey, not just bacon, ham, or sausage. And aside from American cheese, of course, we have Swiss cheese. But we have mozzarella and smoked gouda and pepper jack and cheddar. So I try to offer eight meats and eight cheeses, and that offers a lot of combinations yeah. when you look at the possible variety of bagels. I think that's part of what people like. That looks incredible. Okay. That looks so. Yeah. If uh, oh folks yeah, that, that's that's, a, that's an everything bagel, the sauce of bacon cheese. Okay, so it's an everything bagel. Oh man, that looks great there. Yes. Well, actually, that is what we call a JJ special. I don't know. There was a certain JJ that was working here for many years in this town. And he's gone now, unfortunately, to Arizona. Yeah, we must. He him. used to get two large of these sandwiches. This is a small one, a regular sandwich. Oh, but wow. he would get two large. He, he liked to come day after game day. And his wife also had his beautiful wife, who was the soccer player. She would have a large one also. So they would get three large. Very nice people. That looks I can't incredible. Say enough good about them. Yeah. Bob okay, Orzo. That's, he's that's it. That's it. That Thank looks you. that looks really good, Bob. Bob Orzo is the owner and proprietor of Bagel Bob's. Uh, we're going to, of course, uh, have some more information on his place after the show. Pulling some more bagels out of the oven there. So, yeah, here you got your everythings. They're a little there light. You go. Yeah, they could use a couple more minutes. But this is your everythings and uh, in about three or four minutes. Sorry, I'm a little late on this. Those are going to be the planes. Look at that. Got to get them nice, a nice golden crispy touch there. You know, you want that little crunch on the outside. Yeah. And Soft texture on the inside. Bob, this is what I think we are going to have to get out there and get some breakfast in the future. Okay, I hope you do make it. And if you don't, you give us a call. We'll arrange uh, some kind of a delivery. Bob, I appreciate it. Thank you for being on the show. And once again, folks, we'll have a link to uh, Bagel Bob's 
in our social media post after the show's over. Take okay. care, Bob. Stay safe Thank out there. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. All right. Okay. We are going to move on to uh, our next guest, of course, our HCC guest, Dr. Mehmet Argan, is joining us this morning, and Tony's going to take that over. Tony? Hey, yes, Dr. Um, Mehmet Argan, he is um, the Dean of Global Energy Center of Excellence. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Welcome, Tony. Thank, good morning again. I don't have anything to serve you this morning. I mean, like, Bob, I don't have any bagels. <laughs> I have oils. <laughs> <laughs> you have oils. How about olive oil? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it works, too. Oil is oil. <laughs> there you go. Okay, well, um, tell us, you know, we the oil and gas industry is always such a, a wonderful industry to talk about it in, in so many different ways. Um, and we like to be updated about it. So uh, I know that uh, the, there are lots of high paying jobs and stuff like that. But first, students have to get enrolled in the program before they can get these jobs. Tell us a little bit about the enrollment uh, process for them. Well, uh, you know, under Global Energy, we have four programs, including petroleum engineering, electronics, instrumentation controls and process technology. We are now enrolling for the spring semester. Uh, students can register for classes and uh, uh, you know start taking uh, uh, online and the lecture base and the hands-on classes uh, as early as in the spring semester. Uh, classes are filling quickly. I urge students to you know register as soon as possible. So um, as I was saying, the the uh, energy programs, the energy jobs are generally very high-paying jobs. Is is that true? Yes, that's correct. I mean, that's why people are staying in this business. Uh, within 10 years after graduation, the the trades at HCC, Global Energy Trades, all of these programs, students can make uh, close to $130,000 in this profession. That's a very high paying jobs in global energy sector. <laughs> very much, especially if you just came out of college. That's the whoo. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Um, but now there's also a concern because um, a lot of people were thinking that the oil and gas industry was kind of going down because of all this renewal energy and all of that. But are the jobs returning? Well, jobs are returning. But we have to keep in mind that, uh, Tony, the, there is an energy transition across the world, not in Houston, not in Texas, not in the United States, but across the world. Transition means the companies are investing more on renewable energy, but they still keep their oil and gas industry. I mean, this week, Houston is uh, hosting a 23rd World Petroleum Congress. So all major petroleum countries and companies are in Houston to like uh, talk about the efforts that they do in, in petroleum industry. Uh, jobs are there. I mean, lately, for instance, uh, in upstream oil industry, where there is production and exploration takes place, there is more than 2,000 uh, employment in the uh, in the month of October. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, so there's, and, and I read somewhere that there's a job growth continues in Texas, upstream oil, and then also in downstream oil industry. What in the world is the difference between upstream and downstream? Well, upstream means you produce the oil. There's oil rigs and wells. You see the pump check here behind my, in my background, yeah. that's, a, that's from an oil well where you produce the oil, where okay. you extract the oil. That's mm -hmm. called the upstream oil industry. In the downstream, you produce, you process the oil. You see uh, the refineries okay. in the ship channel and in, in petrochemical plants in Houston area. That's where the uh, process takes place. And those uh, downstream industries also adding a lot of jobs. I mean, lately we have met uh, multiple uh, recruiters uh, across Houston area, they're trying to fill the positions. I mean, companies are adding jobs because of two reasons. One, uh, people are retiring, two, and is, there's a growth. So the raffinery is a raffinery. It doesn't matter whether you use a crude oil to process it or whether you use renewable uh, fats, right? It, it really doesn't matter. The plant does the same thing. Oh, okay. Now, um, dual credit, you have a lot of dual credit students. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, we have launched a process technology dual credit program at the ALIF ISD. Again, it, it's a 
there's a reason why companies are hiring, uh, would like to hire young talents because technology is more and more integrated into plants operations and they need younger people who are, uh, you know, more adaptable with the growing technologies. And that's why we launched this program at the ALIF ISD and we're still working with and other ISDs to launch uh, dual credit programs across system. I understand uh, you're launching it with the uh, ALI ISD this fall? Yeah. Yes. No, we have already launched it this fall. Okay. They're taking a class, uh, a process technology class with us. In fact, they visited our campus a week ago to see the labs we have at the Northeast campus. Excellent. Now, um, I have also heard that biomedical electronics is a big field for internships. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the biomedical electronic technicians, they're also called as biomechs, and they have been the frontline worker during pandemic because they fix the electronic devices that is used at hospitals and medical facilities. Unless you have a biomed technician, uh, the nurses and doctors can't do anything. So it's a very essential job. We have recently signed an MOU with Harris Health System. And according to the MOU, our students can do internship at the Harris Health System, like including Bentop Hospital. When students do internship and their job placement rates goes up, we have 100% job placement rate for biomedical electronics uh, graduates. So it's a shoe-in to a, a job, pretty much. That's correct, yes, yes. Um, now, you have an electronics program uh, at Northwest. Tell us a little bit about that, Northwest College. Uh, global energy programs are located at Northeast College, but we have been trying to expand the programs to uh, other side of the town. And so we identified the Northwest College Ailey Hayes campus as a you know good location for electronics. So we moved there and the, this semester, uh, we we were assigned a dedicated lab. So we have a lab at the Northwest College and that's why we increased the number of courses that we offered at Alif Hayes campus. And it's, it's a great opportunity for students living in the west side of the town. Excellent. And then uh, Southwest College, you've got process technology there, right? Yes, process technology is expanded to Southwest College where electronics was expanded to Northwest, Northwest College. And there is a demand to... Uh, process uh, operation jobs in Missouri City area. That's why we expanded uh, process technology to uh, Missouri City campus. Missouri City is where I live. Uh, okay, energy uh, transition initiatives. We, we mentioned it before, but I know that there's a big demand for carbon, carbon emission reduction and renewable energy resources. So, uh, you're going to start, I think, a wind uh, turbine technician program. Is that true? That's true. I mean, the energy uh, includes everything. It's it's not only oil and gas. It also includes wind and oil, uh, wind and solar. So the Houston is the energy capital of the world, and uh, Houston leaders do not they don't want to lose this title. They still want to remain as the energy capital of the world, no matter what the energy is. For instance, most people know that Texas is an oil state, right? Mm -hmm. But the Texas produces the most wind power of any U.S. state. And the installed wind power capacity is more than any countries other than, guess what, China, Germany, <laughs> and uh, India. So Texas is pretty much leading the rest of the world in wind, wind power. So we, will, we are planning to add a wind turbine technician program under Global Energy. That would be wonderful. So it's really energy, no matter if it's wind or oil or whatever, we're, we're talking about energy. And that's basically what your program is about, right? Yeah, that, that's correct. And when, when we talk about net zero emission, uh, the, the oil companies are trying to capture the uh, carbon dioxide that's released to the air when you, you know, burn the fossil fuel. That's one mission. And they also would like to you know, invest on the renewable energy uh, you know, so so that they will have more energy sources uh, in, in in Texas and in, in 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 the state, in the country. So Texas is the leader. We love to. It say is that. the leader. It won't change. <laughs> <laughs> it won't change. Tesla is here. You know, in Texas, they moved to Texas. <laughs> so yes, there change. you go. There you go. We're Once the leader, state. always a leader. 
<laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Arkin, we really appreciate you being on the show. Uh, global Energy Center of Excellence. And it truly is global because um, you're providing jobs for people that in the United States, but it's also got a global um, uh, imprint also. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks for having me, Tony. Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Bar, uh, Dr. Argan. <laughs> All right. Uh, Todd? All right. Thanks, guys. And uh, if you're interested in the programs in the Global Energy Center of Excellence, we'll include some information in our social media posts. Okay, on to our HCC news and announcements. We've got a, num a number of them on the show this morning. Uh, media Arts Student Showcase. Uh, this is an end of the semester compilation screening of student projects. Uh, they're from filmmaking, audio recording, technology, and music business programs. It's happening 7 p.m. this Saturday, December the 11th. It is free, of course, and you can catch them on YouTube. We'll put a link in our social media post after the show's over. And also, we're doing things virtually with student art exhibitions, Tony. Absolutely. We are using the uh, Instagram as our gallery walls. Instead of having the brick and mortar, uh, you know, we, we've closed those for a while because of the COVID, but we are using uh, Instagram. And so it's going to be open for you to see through December. Just go to HCC Visual Arts Center. Now you have to register for the event, but go just go to Catherine, that's with a K, Catherine.fields at hcs.edu. And we'll have information at the post. Yes. Okay. Fast track training. Remember that it's still around. Uh, we launched it, I believe, last year. And it's a, uh, you can complete short term training to land high demand jobs. Plus, HCC can help you pay for all of your tuition if you qualify. They have them through grants. It's a great program. We're talking programs like construction. IT, healthcare, welding, smart manufacturing, and more. I think there's even cybersecurity included in that as well. Some really high paying jobs and your training is free. You can't beat it. Go to hccs.edu slash fast track. Okay, grads, it's almost that time. Next week is uh, HCC's graduation, Tony, and we are uh, celebrating our graduates. And you can share your day with everybody. Uh, the fall 2021 commencement is December 16th, if you didn't already know. And we want you to share your special day using the hashtag HCC Fall Grad 2021 on your posts. And we will reshare your posts on our official HCC social media accounts. So that's a neat thing, you know, just share it, have fun, and uh, it's another way to enjoy your graduation. That's right. And congratulations to all of our graduates uh, this year. Okay, consider a mini semester during the winter break. Here's how it works. Say you're coming in uh, from another college. You need to catch up on a few hours. You need to retake a course. We can help you with that here at HCC. You earn three credits in four weeks. You can't beat it. It's a mini semester, very accelerated, but uh, you get three credits out of the way. We'll have a link in our social media post to let you know where you can go register for this. If you want to register, you need to get signed up pretty quickly, but you can earn three credits over the winter break. Okay, holiday health and well-being. Uh, that's being put on by our talent engagement, Tony. Yes, um, it's with the employee assistance program that they call guidance resources by Comsight. And um, they've got a lot of things going on. One of them is dealing with physical fitness. Um, another one is financial wellness and then uh, healthy ho holidays. The thing is, is uh, a lot of times uh, some of our stress deals with the finance. Some of it deals with other things. Overeating during the holidays, overspending during the holidays. Um, you know, holidays can be fun for some people and some people it's, it's a sad time of year yeah. uh, because you lose, uh, loved ones and, and stuff like that. So, um, it's a good time, uh, to refresh your mental health, you might say. So you can go to guidanceresources.com and register with your HCC ID 
and uh, it's free and it's a good way to just talk to somebody and, and um, you know, work things out, make, make life a lot easier and healthier for you. Absolutely. Okay. Spring registration. That's right. Spring 2022. Can you believe it? I'm telling you, man, this, where did this year go? What the heck happened to 2021? It's almost over. Well, guess what? We are signing up classes already for spring 2022. Classes will be starting in January. Hard to believe, right? Okay. Five ways to learn. Two of them completely online. Two of them are hybrid courses where you can uh, take your some of it online, some of it in person. And if you say, you know what, I just want to go to a campus and take my classes in person, we got that for you as well. Uh, those on-campus classes in person are going to be very small. They'll follow social distance guidelines. And um, so if you want to get the right time, the right instructor, uh, the campus that you want, in the course, make sure you sign up early and don't let finances stop you from signing up because we've got lots of funding here at HCC to help you get through college right now. Go to hccs.edu slash now to register today. All right, wrapping up today's show, we are uh, tomorrow, it's going to be Small Business Wednesday, Tony. Yes, the Minority Business Development Association, or MBDA, uh, will be back on the show to talk about the things that they are uh, got going on. Marchette Turner uh, is the new director of that um, program, and we'll talk with them about their things that they're doing uh, for small businesses. Yep. And later this week, we've got uh, Ronald Esposito, program coordinator of HCC's paralegal department, joining us on the show. And our family fun day guest, Rice University's Twilight Epiphany Sky Space. What is that all about? We'll show you later in the week. So make sure you tune in for that. Okay. Wrapping up today's show, Tony, we'll see you tomorrow. Yes. I'm kind of through with my Christmas decorations. <laughs> all right. Well, you've still got time to catch up on that today, too, if you want. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Uh, watch our rebroadcast at noon and 5 p.m. on HCC TV. Join us live every morning right here, 10 a.m. for Up to the Minute.